against all odds, I don't give a shit what happens, I'm gonna come out on top or I'm gonna die trying. Call it. Call it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Colin with Colin show. I'm your co-host, Digital Jeff. Question of the day: If you were to, if you were forced to write a book, what would your book be about, and what would be the title? I know it's a tough question. Write down your comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, today's guest is Mike Seller, calling in from Nashville, Tennessee, and he just released his new book. It's called The Genius Within, Your Natural Pathway to Impact, Fulfillment, and Wealth. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to have a successful book launch. And just for pre-context, this episode was filmed prior to him releasing his book. So Mike is a business architect and entrepreneur mentor who helps professionals find their zone of genius and rewire the subconscious to fuel momentum towards their life's purpose. He studied under masters such as Tony Robbins, Russell Brunson, Jay Abraham, uh, and many other legends. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mike Zeller to the show. Colin, my question for you is, you've built such a great business platform and you've been through real adversity and challenges both in your life and in your business and with Redline. What does it take to be a successful entrepreneur? And since the mindset and the conviction, like how, how have you survived it all? How have you survived the highs and the lows? Like what is the mindset of a successful entrepreneur really look like? Yeah, I mean, so great question, Mike. I think, um, you know, I've known you for a long time, close to 10 years now, and my mindset has always been eager to learn and egos at the door. And so some of the uh, most successful entrepreneurs that I know at least um, are always willing to learn and absorb um, versus the opposite of when people, uh, you've probably heard the saying like the loudest person in the room is usually the one that's not doing a lot of things. Um, or, yeah, so let success do that talking for you. My thing is from a ment mentality standpoint, my advice would be to be um, really soul search, figure out exactly what it is that you um, are really, really strong at. You talk about it in our mastermind zone, zone of genius, like find exactly what you're good at, harness that energy and focus hardcore on it. Um, I personally like, thrive under pressure. And I think that that makes entrepreneurs 10 times stronger. When you're put into certain situations, how are you going to come out on top? And when the odds are against you and stacked against you, I mean, look at today, what's happening from an economic standpoint, inflation, look at uh, the pandemic, uh, the job market, all of these scenarios that you cannot plan for. But as an entrepreneur, you don't have an option. You have to either give up like most, most people would under these circumstances or say, you know what, I'm going to figure something else out. Um, one thing that we're doing at Redline is now that it's been very, very challenging for us to get steel directly from the meal and steel is almost 300% higher than where it was this time last year, I'm transitioning into different types of product lines from canvas to apparel to um, using different materials that we had never. And so it's forced us to pivot into directions that we've never really thought of going as well as launching like the platform that we're doing right now with Millionaire Creator um, so that we can use this as an outlet and essentially build a business model where I can become the bank um, and look at liquidity from a different standpoint, where it can be a lot more profitable to monetize from different, uh, different angles. But this is a lot of forward thinking. But when you talk about the mindset, this is what it takes. The mindset framework to think outside of the box and do whatever the fuck it takes at the end of the day. Like that's, that's the mindset that you have to have is yeah. against all odds, I don't give a shit what happens I'm going to come out on top or I'm going to die trying. Dude, so good. And that, that conviction, what, one of the things I appreciate about you is you have such conviction about it and it rubs off. Like being around you, I, I get some of that conviction rubbed off on me, you know, and it's, it's beautiful. So you, let me ask you a second question. 
when you set out, I, knowing your story, when you set out to become America's top fitness cover model, you did it. You were on over 50 fitness cover models. And, and you know, you had an irresistible offer that helped you get that platform. But I've got this book coming out, The Genius Within, that I, I genuinely believe. I've studied this stuff. I've read 1,500 books. Um, I've never seen a more complete process for answering that core question, what on earth am I here for? But I'd love to tap into your genius around like, hey, what the heck would you do to blow this up and also to help impact people, especially in this transition of like, hey, this this world's uncertain. This is scary for a lot of people. Yeah. But, uh, I feel like the book is, is spot on with some, some people's needs. But what would you do to market and blow up the, the book? Yeah. So great question. First off, what was the name of that of your book that's launching? The Genius Within Your Natural Pathway to impact, fulfillment, and prosperity. And who would you target as an audience for this consumer? It's it's going to be the high achiever that's in into personal development. So they're already buying the Tony Robbins books, the Gary Vees. They're you know they could be in a variety of careers. They're not necessarily an entrepreneur, but they're probably a very driven. So the ambitious, uh, high achiever type, type three on the Enneagram, where they're achiever oriented because they care and they're asking those deep questions about life um, or they're in a career transition, you know, of, uh, or wanting to step into something else because um, it helps answer that, gives you the greatest accumulation of clues about who on earth you are, what on earth you're meant to do. Okay. I've got okay. my notebook right. Guys, guys. I'm taking notes. Yeah. So what I love is he already knows the framework. So he's reversed engineered from, from the author standpoint, writing the book, who is their book for? and then reverse engineering, who is the focus categories that I could go after? Who are those um, key social influencers that, like you mentioned, Tony Robbins. So that's a great targeted audience from like a reverse psychology standpoint that I can now target using a uh, very specific ad copy, uh, creatives, um, Facebook, you know, interest groups. Knowing who your in avatar is is super, uh, important. What I would say is like you mentioned the success that I had from being a fitness model. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that um, I provided value. That's all it was. It wasn't an irresistible offer on the front end to them. It was, but at the end of the day, like it was more, what can I do for you? So leveraging that same type of mentality of not thinking about like, what if you what if this could feed the ecosystem? And it wasn't just about the monetary standpoint. A lot of things should be almost like I'm willing, look at what Russell Brunson does, right? He's, he's willing to uh, basically give 100% of the commissions back for his books for affiliates or pay above that because he knows the lifetime value of what this book is. Now, Mike, I know you've written several books, so it could be, thinking outside of the box, leveraging, maybe it's not this brand new release, but something pre-existing to get them in your ecosystem, leveraging the power of value uh, and, and maybe even value stacking, saying, you know what, the first 1,500 people that buy the book, I'm gonna give you every book that I wrote. And they pay full retail and, and just look at it from a numbers perspective, does it make sense? And then that's, a FOMO play, it's also urgency, they have 1500 um, and it's something to feed off of. And then you could leverage affiliates as well to know this is how much all of these books would have cost me, I'm willing to pay that amount um, for that acquisition of that customer. So what is, and, and you really need to think about your pain tolerance from a market ad spend perspective. Like, are you willing to test um, and be uncomfortable in, I guess, be comfortable in uncomfortable situations because that's really is where you're gonna thrive or you're going to do the opposite and say, all right, that didn't work, but I'm not gonna do it on the next book. And those are all learning lessons. And I promise you, if you like can conceptualize like, all right, this is a test, this is my pain tolerance, I'll, I'm willing to go up to this threshold. After that, I'm cutting it off, but at least there's some type of learning um, behavior behind it. So, um, yeah, hopefully that answers some of your questions about yeah. that. I wanted to ask as well, a uh, follow up question on that is what about on the, you 
do a terrific job with your charity give backs. Like you gave away millions of dollars last year in product. And I've been thinking creatively like, Hey, uh, how could I, like, I want to help nonprofits and help people in need. Like if I can equip them to realize, Hey, like let's, so what you grew up poor, but if I can help, uh, people believe in themselves, our capacity for who we can become shifts dramatically when we have a deeper belief in ourselves and we have clarity about where we bring the most value to the world, which I feel like this book does. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering how I haven't figured out. I genuinely have not figured out how I want to approach the charity angle. And you're so freaking good at that. What would you say to me on approaching the charity angle and who I should be looking for to collaborate with crafts? So anytime I'm looking at partnering with a charity or nonprofit, um, a lot of times it's looking at, is it an alignment within my personal life? Like, what is that connection? I'm not just going to do things that I don't resonate with or connect with. I'm a firm believer in like law of attraction and energy attracts energy. Um, so I've got to align vertically with that. So knowing who, I, man, you know me a long time. I'm big on law of attraction. <laughs> Like everything that's happened in my life is, you know, God's opened so many doors for me that I can't even question. And I know, you know, this is my mindset and this is off topic, but God has not opened this many doors just to close them. When you're going through a hard time and lottie dotty, everybody will go through a hard time, especially as an entrepreneur, the highs, the massive lows beyond ground level lows. You've got to have that, that mentality to break walls and say, you know what? I've made it out of worse situations or maybe this is the worst it's ever been. The framework to know that I'm gonna be stronger and this shit will not happen again like this. And it'll put you in a much better mental situation when you're enduring that next downslope. You know, and I know we've both went through a lot of challenges. Going back to topic, um, I would ask you what charities come to mind l for your book um, that you think would be a good fit. And if you have some in mind, I've got kind of a next steps for that. You know, I've thought of a couple. Um, first, one that's relevant for you is some nonprofits that help military guys uh, reacclimate to the world. Because they're like, all right, hey, I just came out. I got this skill set, but what the heck else am I going to do with it? and entering into civilian life. And a lot of people fall off, unfortunately, on that. I've, I met a homeless guy recently that just kind of, uh, you know, has disability and PTSD and all that stuff and hasn't really, he's selling homeless newspapers, you know? And he was a Afghani vet to, to combat tours. And I'm like, how, so that's one cause, but I'm also like, I don't personally, uh, I need to do more research to figure out a college or a young adult or career transition type nonprofit, but, um, and maybe I, I'm, I do a give back of something like for every book sold, we give one away. And then maybe I can, with all the nonprofits, I can give away digital books and courses. Yeah. I'd be glad to give my course as well. Um, you know, give thousands of dollars of, of worth of the course away too. Um, so I'm, I ha haven't figured it out yet, but I'm, uh, if, if you have any of your insight there. Yeah, so I've got, this is what I would do. Um, I would look at it from, if it was a charity or nonprofit side, find somebody and leverage their list. You know, market demand is very, very expensive. Um, and it's getting worse. It's getting more expensive to, to tap into different market shares. E-commerce is on the rise. Um, you know, the retail in-store is starting to die off. So the demand of attention is very, very challenging. This is what I would say, leverage nonprofits and charities to be that distribution list. Um, and you can donate, I would say donate all of the profits so you don't lose money, but profits, then monetize OTOs post-purchase, right? So build a landing page, build a funnel, and then they get the first sale, whatever that is, leverage their own list. And if you have four or five charities that are doing this, it could be a massive play. And as long as your OTO take rate, like one-time offer post-purchase, 
rates are above a certain threshold, you have no marketing money and from a market ad spend perspective for new customer acquisition, right? And now you've got, you know who you're targeting because you know the nonprofit, um, you know that it's for a good cause, partner with the publicist that can also say, and then, and then it'll end up being a multi-tiered ripple. It'll be, okay, Mike Zeller and his book launched and partnered with X, Y, and Z charity. Then you donate a big ass eight foot check that's like $100,000 to this nonprofit. And then that's another massive ripple that can get more public exposure. And all of this costs you nothing more than your time, right? And the more books that you buy, the cheaper that it is, right? In theory, that's the way it should work. I know inflation's crazy, but like in theory, if you buy 10,000 books, it's gonna be cheaper than a thousand. Yeah. So your net profit that you're monetizing through your own website is even higher. So leverage, and that, that's really thinking outside of the box when you're leveraging uh, your physical cogs as an offset, not having that market ad spend, monetizing post-purchase, and not having, um, uh, just having better rates in general for your, your cogs because of the amount of volume. So that's super off the wall though. Yeah. 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 Saying thank you, brother, for being on the show. Um, always good to see you. Um, so guys, for context, Mike Zeller and I, we've known each other for about 10 years. Um, I asked him to be one of our first guests so that we can guinea pig this and really try to figure out what we're doing. Um, you know, just like any other business, when you first get started, that's the hardest part is that first leap of faith. Over time, it's just gonna continuously get better with time and you're gonna become more comfortable and it's gonna get better. Post-production is gonna get better. Uh, Jeff, who's behind the scenes, he's gonna start to get in, in a really good motion feel for what's happening. Um, but it's, it's great to have incredible guys like yourself, who's also a business partner of mine with my mastermind, Founders Mastery, uh, that I can lean on and say, Mike, can you be on the show? This is what we're working on. So thank you. And um, I hope this was able to provide some value for you. Oh, uh, dude, it was great. Always great connecting, my friend. You guys rock. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with your friends. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, a new episode drops. Also, you can be on the show. If you go to invite.millionairecreator.com, you can apply. It's free, and you may have a chance to be on the show with me. Colin with Colin. Be sure to share this video, and if you do, we may reshare your post. Also, if you enjoy entrepreneurship just like I do, I would encourage you to go to our new website, millionairecreator.com. We have some incredible products from steel merchandise, canvas, apparel, and education courses, eBooks, and physical books. So guys, millionairecreator.com, Check it out for yourself. I know you'll love it, especially for all of those entrepreneurs out there. Think of me as a recruiter and I'm building an army of millionaires in this millionaire creator journey. I'm Colin Wayne, your instructor from Millionaire Creator and someone that has been to war, that's battle tested, bootstrapping my business to over 150,000 square feet and the fastest growing company in the state of Alabama for the first time ever. I'm here to reveal my tactics and strategies that work in today's state, not something that worked years ago. Boot camp starts today. Stop wasting time. Click that link.